NASA's 29 Days on the Edge is in full swing, and the James Webb Space Telescope has undergone two of its three course corrections on the way to its orbiting point. If the corrections failed, the possibility is strong that the $10 billion redecade project would fly right past its target and into deep space. It would then become what one observer called the most expensive space junk in history. Welcome to Phagnominal. In today's video, we dig deep into the course corrections that mean the difference between unprecedented success for humanity's most ambitious observatory project and a study in useless technology. Course corrections are more than critical for Webb's mission to succeed. They are life and death. Reaching destination L2, or the Sun-Earth second Lagrange point, is vital for the project to gather the unprecedented data it's designed for. While most of the energy necessary to propel the telescope to its final destination was provided by the Ariane 5 rocket, reaching the proper orbiting point requires more trajectory changes along the way. The most important mid-course correction, MCC, dubbed by NASA as MCC-1A, began 12.5 hours after the rocket left the spaceport in Kourou, French Guiana on December 25th. Besides the obvious challenge of making sure JWST reached its destination, NASA also determined this time for course correction based on fuel consumption. Propellant took 10 days to load due to how toxic and dangerous it is. Specifically, 159 liters or 43 gallons of hydrazine fuel and 79.5 liters or 21 gallons of dinitrogen tetroxide oxidizer. This amount of fuel is the main factor in how long the spacecraft's lifespan extends. The correction time was chosen for 12.5 hours after launch to be early enough that less fuel would be consumed by the correction, meaning more remains for regular operations and extending Webb's lifetime. More on that later. The correction wasn't scheduled sooner to allow the Flight Dynamics team to get tracking data from widely dispersed ground stations in Kenya, Australia, and Spain. This gave them critically accurate details on Webb's journey thus far, so the correction burn would be exactly what was needed to reach the right point at L2. And while the team worked to analyze exactly how much of a correction was needed, it was apparent quickly that Ariane 5's positioning of Webb was better than the mission required. Now it's time to correct course, and if it's done incorrectly, mission aborted. Imagine being in a vehicle with only an accelerator. You will eventually slow down, and hopefully at the right point. But if at any moment you accelerate too much, you overshoot your destination with no possibility of turning back and getting there. For the James Webb Space Telescope, it is a similar challenge. It was always intended for the Ariane 5 to deliver a slight underburn when launched, because there is no course correction possible for overthrust. It is critical that Webb maintains its sun-facing side pointed back and away from the telescope's cold optics. There cannot be heat to condense on the observatory's cold side, or mission over. Thus, the thrusters can only push JWST away from the sun, so overshooting L2 leaves no way to return. Likewise, this led to MCC-1A also being designed to slightly underburn. Just as any overthrust by Ariane 5 dooms the mission, it's the same result from any subsequent course correction that goes too far. At the same time, much like any spacecraft, Webb needed to perform this trajectory maneuver to atone for slight differences in where the Ariane 5 placed it. So far, so good. At 8.55 p.m. Eastern Time on December 25th, after 65 nail-biting minutes of course correction burn, JWST was successfully pointed towards its destination. Mission control was elated by this 65-minute burn, which may seem like a long time, but could easily have lasted as long as three hours. Not only did it require less fuel, but it was also accurate and added 72 kilometers per hour or 45 miles per hour to web speed. However, two more crucial course corrections are coming, one only two days later. The second course correction was completed by NASA two days after the James Webb Space Telescope launched, and it was also critical that the spacecraft be properly aligned on course to its L2 destination, and especially that the level of thrust provided did not cause it to fly right past its target and into infamy. NASA reported the second course correction, dubbed MCC-1B, began at 7.20 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday, December 27th, 60 hours after liftoff. 
It was a shorter process, lasting only 9 minutes and 27 seconds, and was successful as well. Not only did the course correction, nerve-wracking though it was, go off without a hitch, just minutes later, Webb crossed the moon's orbit. NASA officials tweeted, it's been a busy evening. Not only did we just complete our second burn, but hashtag NASA Webb also passed the altitude of the moon as it keeps cruising on to the second Lagrange point to hashtag unfold the universe, by at NASA Moon. Perhaps it should be noted that by moon did not mean that Webb came anywhere near Earth's satellite, just that it crossed the average distance of the moon's orbit from Earth, 240,000 miles or 384,000 kilometers. It was observed by astronomer Jonathan McDowell that the closest Webb came to the moon was when it sat on the launch pad in Karoo. So, do we want the good news or the better news first? From the beginning, the saga of the James Webb Space Telescope is one of missed targets, cost overruns, and shall we say, engineering challenges. The first launch date of 2007 whizzed by just like the next one, and the next one, and so on. But why dwell on the past when the present is going so well? First, the good news. All is well thus far. Both course corrections worked as planned, deployments have gone smoothly, and what project engineers practice repeatedly has worked like a charm. And now the better news. There was never going to be a Hubble-type lifespan for Webb. The Hubble Space Telescope was deployed in 1990 and is coming up on its 32nd year of operation, not so for Webb. The rocket propellant on board is a critical factor in the observatory's lifespan, and Webb launched with a minimum baseline of a five-year mission. Besides mid-course corrections and insertion into orbit around L2, the fuel must be available for other necessary functions, such as small thruster burns to adjust Webb's orbit to maintain proper orientation in space. Now it's time to tip our hats to the Ariane Space Ariane 5 launch. It was obvious to mission engineers early on that the rocket outperformed expectations in putting Webb on the correct trajectory. Then there's the first mid-course correction maneuver, which, as we already noted, took only 65 minutes when planners foresaw up to three hours of burn needed. Now add to that the extra 72 kilometers per hour, that's 45 miles per hour, to its velocity due to the precision of the correction maneuver. Plus, the second correction maneuver on day three put another 6.3 miles per hour, or 10.1 kilometers per hour, on the spacecraft speedometer, meaning even less fuel needed to reach L2. Add all this together and you get the news that NASA posted on Day 5, December 29th. The Webb team has analyzed its initial trajectory and determined the observatory should have enough propellant to allow support of science operations in orbit for significantly more than a 10-year science lifetime. NASA further says the analysis shows that less propellant than originally planned for is needed to correct Webb's trajectory toward its final orbit around L2 a point of gravitational balance on the far side of Earth, away from the Sun. Consequently, Webb will have much more than the baseline estimate of propellant, though many factors could ultimately determine Webb's duration of operation. So, before the entire James Webb Space Telescope is completely unfurled, we have the expectation of double or more of the science anticipated at launch. As critical as this seems, it's even more critical in that Webb will be virtually impossible to be serviced or refueled as it might be in an Earth orbit, and there's still one more correction to come. Remember NASA's 29 days on the edge? Day 29 will see the third mid-course correction for Webb, and this time, if all goes well, it will be to insert the observatory into the optimal orbit around L2. As Mike Menzel, Webb Mission Lead System Engineer said, there are no second chances. We have 300 single-point failure items, and they will all have to work right. When you are a million miles away from Earth, you cannot send someone to fix it. With so many potential obstacles ahead, uncorking champagne must wait until midsummer at the earliest. There's much nail-biting and hand-wringing left to be done by NASA and all of us who want a closer look at our universe. But it is understandable that, after so many years of rolling the rock up the hill, only to see it come tumbling back down, NASA maybe, just maybe, is on the verge of seeing its historic mission to explore the beginnings of the universe come to fruition. So, what do you think about the progress thus far of the James Webb Space Telescope? Are you sharing in NASA's 29 Days on the Edge, checking for updates on humanity's latest and greatest mission to peer into our universe's past? 
tell us in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching Fact Nominal.